Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today. Today we will cover three main topics. So we are looking into the supercharging network. We will look into Loop Ventures and their expectation for Tesla deliveries in 2021. And furthermore, we do have Giga Berlin. We have good news and bad news. So we will look into that and why I think there is some good news in the delays we are seeing right now. You will tell me I'm crazy, but honestly, I think it, it, there's a smart move they are doing right now. And we will look into that. So if you do enjoy that, if you subscribe my channel, you give me support for my work and I hope you follow me for my daily updates now. And let's start with the first topic, the supercharging network. We haven't heard about the supercharging network a lot because it is in the background expanding. They are building superchargers, especially in China, a lot. They are expanding the network over there and they have the factory as we know. But what is happening was there was one big disadvantage of the supercharging network. It was kind of not as green as many people wanted it to have. So what does that mean? Well, you had the supercharging stations, but the electricity not always came from green um, electricity. So it's like, yeah, I have an EV, but I'm taking the electricity from uh, coal or what it's whatsoever. So th this makes no sense. And we do know that Tesla always wanted to change that. It made a lot of sense to do that, but they didn't have the money to it. They always had to cut down costs, especially in the past few years. But I think now they are finally having the money in hand to go and move forward. And what actually the person said who is in charge of the supercharging network went on Twitter and it was actually kind of explaining how much uh, gasoline was safe with the supercharging network, etc., etc. And then the last part was actually, well, and we are going to get all superchargers with green energy, green electricity by end of 2021. And in further reports, I, I have kind of find out that we do have here um, reports that show that Tesla is really thinking about cutting off the entire supercharging network from the regular grid and just get the energy through solar roofs and then store it in power walls. And to be honest, it is a smart move, but it is a move that we could have expected because Tesla is really trying to get the most powerful supercharging network in the world. And it makes a lot of sense to make it independent from all the um, yeah outside electricity companies, etc. So makes a lot of sense to use the power walls, use this uh, solar roof or the solar panels and um, have the energy stored for the time at night when people are charging. So again, makes a lot of sense. I think the timeline is really aggressive for end of 2021. But again, let's see how this is turning out. Looking at Giga Berlin guys. So we do have some bad news coming from Giga Berlin. First of all, there was a regular audit and they actually found out that Tesla was building pipes underground already that they were not allowed to actually get in there. So the audit decided to make them happen like a um, construction stop for this area, not for the entire building, but they had to um, stop constructing these pipes. So we do see that there's a lot of fight between the um, authorities and the people from the government and Tesla itself. But I think it, they realize at Tesla and they have done that in the earnings call that the Giga Berlin will not come so fast um, yeah, to play as they expected. So again, we are not expecting any model wise in the summertime. This is what many people of you who are watching my videos were expecting long time ago, but I always waited for like an official, official hint that Tesla is really saying, well, no, we are not going to make it. And looking at the batteries, guys, the main reason why the delay might go even further is because Tesla is now deciding, and this is actually a smart move, and you will understand that in a second. They are now deciding to get a battery cell production on the site, which was not initially planned at the moment. And they are saying, well, we want to get that in the initial uh, um, permit that they are working on already with the building. 
So the smart move here is they have learned from the long time it takes to get the approval for anything in Germany. And this means at the end of the day, they are now getting the trying to get the approval for the battery cell production at the same time as for the factory. And this really means that Tesla is really trying to get the time now to get both ready. And this makes a lot of sense for me because you finish this factory, you need to get batteries from Fremont, from the Roadrunner, makes no sense at all. And they realize all this paperwork for the cell production will take so much more time. We can do it right now with the total permit for the factory. And that makes so much more sense because they are speeding up the process to get the battery cell production running. So again, I think that's a really smart move. They are adapting to the speed that we have here in Germany and the regulators and all these yeah, law enforcements and whatsoever happening here, um, trying to prevent um, this factory or trying to dig in any and find anything that is wrong. So really smart move. So I think it is good news that Tesla is adapting to that, but I think we will expect model wise not very soon. So again, guys, when we look at the Giga Austin and thanks to Jeff Roberts here for the content, I do believe we will have really, really a lot of growth happening here. We will see the model Y in um, 2021 from Giga Austin and at the end of the year as well from Giga Berlin. I think right now, as we are just ta talked about Giga Berlin, it is pretty clear that we might even see Model Ys coming in Giga Austin out before Giga Berlin in case they are at the same speed for a longer time here and they are moving really fast here. So Loop Ventures, the third topic of this video, actually said they are expecting a growth of 80% this year. It is not astonishing that someone is saying that as we all do know that Tesla will achieve that. But again, what I find really interesting is that the expectations after the first quarter got higher and higher and higher, meaning at the beginning, people were saying more well, like 700,000, 750,000. Now people are talking 800,000, 800,000. Okay, okay, maybe we get 800,000. But guys, honestly, they will expect around 800 to 850,000. But I think after the second quarter, latest mid third quarter, they will realize that actually 1 million cars is possible. So again, I think they will further increase their expectations and seeing Loop Ventures and others increasing their expectations is a really good sign, guys. So I hope you did enjoy my video, guys, and I hope to see you back very soon for my daily updates.